the compliance with the requirement of appeal bond in labor cases and the existence of employment relationship are the highlighted topics in this case. Salazar v. Simbahon Albina and several persons alleged that Abelardo, Quirino, and Lucia employed them for various years as lady keeper, waitress, receptionist, dispatcher, busboy, DJ, entertainer, cook, and cashier at the latter's restaurant. Albina and her group narrated that in June 2006, restaurant management began harassing them after they formed a union. Albina and her group further stated that on June 30, 2006, Lucia informed them of the termination of their employment since the restaurant will be closing due to bankruptcy. Aggrieved by that development, Albina and her group filed a complaint for unfair labor practice, illegal dismissal, and money claims against Abelardo, Quirino, and Lucia before the Office of the Labor Arbiter. Albina and her group asserted therein that the restaurant was financially stable and that the claim of serious business losses was merely a ruse to terminate their employment. On the other hand, Abelardo denied the existence of an employment relationship with Albina and her group. Abelardo argued that he was not the owner of the restaurant since he was merely the lesser of the building where the said restaurant operated. As supporting documents, Abelardo submitted contracts of lease and tax returns showing that he earned income from rentals. Abelardo likewise presented the restaurant's Certificate of Registration of Business Name, Mayor's Permit, and Certificate of Registration with the Bureau of Internal Revenue, which were all issued in Lucia's name. The Office of the Labor Arbiter found that the presented contracts of lease were inconclusive to disavow any employment relationship between Abelardo and Albina and her group. Said office ruled that Albina and her group were illegally dismissed from employment. Abelardo, Lucia, and Quirino were held solidarily liable to pay the awards in the total amount of 3,683,394 pesos and 45 centavos. Records showed that the decision of the Office of the Labor Arbiter was received by Abelardo on March 23, 2007. On March 30, 2007, or seven days after receiving the Office of the Labor Arbiter's decision, Abelardo filed his appeal with the National Labor Relations Commission. He posted a cash bond of 500,000 pesos. Abelardo also moved to reduce the bond. On April 2, 2007, or the last day within which to file his appeal, Abelardo posted a surety bond in the amount of 3,100,000 pesos. Thereafter, Abelardo moved to substitute the cash bond earlier posted in the amount of 500,000 pesos with a surety bond of the same amount. The National Labor Relations Commission granted the motion and ordered Abelardo to post the surety bond. Abelardo complied with the order. Later, the National Labor Relations Commission exonerated Abelardo from liability as it found no substantial evidence of employment relationship with Albina and her group. Albina and her group elevated the case to the Court of Appeals and asserted that the National Labor Relations Commission committed grave abuse of discretion in giving due course to Abelardo's appeal despite his failure to post a bond equivalent to the monetary award. The Court of Appeals granted the petition. It ruled that Abelardo failed to perfect his appeal to the National Labor Relations Commission and it reinstated the decision of the Office of the Labor Arbiter. According to the Court of Appeals, only the amount of 500,000 pesos was posted as bond when Abelardo filed his appeal. The Court of Appeals added that Abelardo's motion to reduce bond was deemed denied since the same was not acted upon by the National Labor Relations Commission and since no meritorious ground supported the same. For the Court of Appeals, the full amount of the appeal bond should have been posted by Abelardo when he filed his appeal. For failure to comply with the mandatory and jurisdictional appeal bond requirement, and in the absence of substantial proof to the contrary, the Court of Appeals ruled that Abelardo's appeal was never perfected and that the National Labor Relations Commission did not acquire jurisdiction over the case. Abelardo filed his petition with the Supreme Court and pointed out the following. 1. He posted a cash bond of 500,000 pesos on March 30, 2007 within the period to file an appeal. 2. Such cash bond was subsequently substituted by a surety bond of the same amount and 3. He then posted a surety bond in the amount of 3,100,000 pesos. Abelardo also insisted that Albina and her group failed to establish their employment relationship with him. Abelardo stressed that Albina and her group even alleged in their position paper that it was Lucia who dismissed them. In their comment, Albina and her group retorted with three points. 1. There was no evidence that Abelardo posted the appeal bond within the reglementary period. 
Two, the indemnity agreement between Abelardo and the bonding company did not provide the effectivity period and the amount of premium paid. And three, through the affidavit of the restaurant's former manager, it was shown that Abelardo had the final authority in the hiring of employees and their work assignments. Was Abelardo's appeal perfected? The Supreme Court ruled in the affirmative. The court reiterated the principle that the right to appeal is a mere statutory privilege exercised only in the manner and in accordance with the requirements of the law. With regard to appeals to the National Labor Relations Commission from decisions, awards, or orders of the Office of the Labor Arbiter, the Supreme Court pointed to Article 229 of the Labor Code of the Philippines, which provides that in case of a judgment involving a monetary award, an appeal by the employer may be perfected only upon the posting of a cash or surety bond issued by a reputable bonding company duly accredited by the Commission in the amount equivalent to the monetary award in the judgment appealed from. The Supreme Court also referred to Section 6 of Rule 6 of the 2005 Revised Rules of Procedure of the NLRC, which was effective at the time Abelardo questioned the Office of the Labor Arbiter's decision. Relevant portion of the provision states, No motion to reduce bond shall be entertained except on meritorious grounds and only upon the posting of a bond in a reasonable amount in relation to the monetary award. The mere filing of a motion to reduce bond without complying with the requisites in the preceding paragraphs shall not stop the running of the period to perfect an appeal. The Supreme Court explained that the purpose of the posting of cash or surety bond is to assure the employees that they will receive the monetary award granted them if they finally prevail in the case. The bond also serves to discourage employers from using the appeal to delay or even evade their obligation to satisfy the judgment. Notably, the court added, the posting of appeal bond is not only mandatory but jurisdictional as well. Noncompliance with the bond requirement is fatal and has the effect of rendering the judgment final and executory. The Supreme Court clarified that in exceptional cases, however, the bond requirement may be relaxed in line with the deserved objective of labor laws to resolve controversies on their merits, provided that 1. There is substantial compliance with the rules. 2. Surrounding facts and circumstances constitute meritorious grounds to reduce the bond. 3. A liberal interpretation of the requirement of an appeal bond would serve the desired objective of resolving controversies on their merits. Or, 4. The appellants, at the very least, exhibited their willingness and or good faith by posting a partial bond during the reglementary period. The Supreme Court continued that the reduction of the bond is not warranted when 1. No meritorious ground is shown to justify the same. 2. The appellant absolutely failed to comply with the requirement of posting a bond even if partial. Or 3. When circumstances show the employer's unwillingness to ensure the satisfaction of its workers' valid claims. In the present case, the Supreme Court ruled that the Court of Appeals erred in dismissing Abelardo's appeal for non-perfection. The court found that Abelardo received on March 23, 2007, the Office of the Labor Arbiter's decision and that he had until April 2, 2007, or the 10th day from his receipt of such decision, to file an appeal. On March 30, 2007, Abelardo appealed and moved to reduce the bond. At the same time, Abelardo deposited a cashier's check in the amount of 500,000 pesos in favor of Albina and her group. On April 2, 2007, or the last day of the period to appeal, Abelardo posted a surety bond in the amount of 3,100,000 pesos. Subsequently, with approval of the National Labor Relations Commission, Abelardo replaced the 500,000 peso check deposit with a surety bond of the same amount. For the Supreme Court, Abelardo posted a total of 3,600,000 pesos within the reglementary period which substantially covered the total monetary award of 3,683,394 pesos and 45 centavos. The Supreme Court considered such amount a substantial compliance and the same demonstrated Abelardo's willingness to abide with the rules on perfection of appeals. The Supreme Court found no merit to the assertions of Albina and her group regarding the failure of the indemnity agreement to indicate the effectivity period and the amount of premium paid. This is because such aspects do not affect the validity of the surety bond and since the rules of procedure of the National Labor Relations Commission does not require such formalities with respect to the contents of the indemnity agreement. 
The court stressed that in any case, the rules are explicit that a cash or surety bond shall be valid and effective from the date of deposit or posting until the case is finally decided, resolved, or terminated, or the award satisfied. This condition shall be deemed incorporated in the terms and conditions of the surety bond and shall be binding on the appellants and the bonding company. The Supreme Court accordingly ruled that the Court of Appeals should have considered the merits of the case given that the labor adjudication system rests on the norm that rules of technicality must yield to the broader interest of substantial justice. In this regard, while the Supreme Court remarked that it could have remanded the case to the Court of Appeals for proper disposition on the merits, the Supreme Court deemed it more appropriate and practical to resolve the question of the existence of employment relationship in order to avoid further delay. Did an employer-employee relationship exist between Abelardo and Albina and her group? On this issue, the Supreme Court ruled in the negative. The Supreme Court enumerated the fourfold test of employment relationship, namely, 1. Selection and engagement of the employee or the power to hire. 2. Payment of wages. 3. Power to dismiss. And 4. Power to control the employee. Applying such test, the Supreme Court declared that Abelardo was not the employer of Albina and her group. This was based on the following findings. First, there was no substantial evidence that Abelardo participated in the selection of the restaurant employees. Although the Supreme Court noted the affidavit of the restaurant's former manager, which was presented by Albina and her group, it ruled that the same was not substantial proof, absent supporting evidence, such as pre-employment records, appointment letters, or engagement contracts, indicating Abelardo's involvement in the recruitment process. Second, Albina and her group did not present any payslip showing that they directly received their premiums and salaries from Abelardo. Third, as to the power to dismiss, Albina and her group admitted that it was Lucia who terminated their services. There was no evidence that Abelardo wielded such authority. Lastly, concerning the power of control, there was no proof that Abelardo issued orders and instructions to Albina and her group or that he supervised and monitored the proper performance of their work. On the other hand, the Supreme Court found that Abelardo substantiated his claim that he was a mere lesser of the restaurant. Abelardo submitted contracts of lease and tax returns showing that he earned income solely from building rentals. Abelardo likewise presented the Certificate of Registration of Business Name, Mayor's Permit, and Certificate of Registration with the Bureau of Internal Revenue, which were all issued in Lucia's name. The Supreme Court considered such certifications as executed in the performance of official duty of government agencies concerned and can be relied upon as evidence of the facts stated therein. Furthermore. Such documents enjoy the presumption of regularity unless the contrary is proved. The Supreme Court thus ruled that Albina and her group's idle implication that Abelardo used these documents as a subterfuge to evade liability deserved scant consideration. In sum, the court reiterated that the quantum of proof in labor cases is substantial evidence or such amount of relevant evidence which a reasonable mind might accept as adequate to justify a conclusion. The burden of proof rests upon the party who asserts the affirmative of an issue. In the present case, the Supreme Court found that Albina and their group utterly failed to establish with substantial evidence their supposed employment relationship with Abelardo. The Supreme Court concluded that their case for illegal dismissal cannot prosper absent employment relationship between the parties. The Supreme Court thus granted Abelardo's petition and reinstated the decision of the National Labor Relations Commission.